Hey guys, I'm Lisa. When writing essays, text response or comparative, we're always told that we should use examples from the text. And the go-to option are quotes because that's all that we've been taught since we were in year seven, if not even younger. But in VCE, one of the things that you should also watch out for are literary devices. These are also known as literary techniques and sometimes by other names, just depending on which teacher you've got. But just like quotes, they are another method to help you demonstrate your understanding of the text. And it's a great way to showcase evidence that isn't as often discussed or as often used in essays, which might give you that opportunity to stand out from other students. So today's comparative is Ransom and Invictus. Let's get started with a quick background and then we're gonna go into the literary devices. Ransom revisits an old story in Homer's Iliad about individuals in times of war as they overcome the lasting vestiges of conflict. Written in parts by author David Malouf, it explores the trials and tribulations of individuals as they are faced with the harsh reality of war. Invictus is a modern historical fiction that reimagines Nelson Mandela's presidency in South Africa in the immediate post-apartheid period. The campaign against apartheid in sport became a global issue as director Clint Eastwood depicts South Africa's fight for reconciliation alongside South Africa's Rugby World Cup victory. When we focus on literary techniques, we're asking ourselves not what Malouf or Eastwood is saying, but how they are saying it. So instead of just quoting from the text, we can use meta-language, textual conventions, and literary devices to enhance our analysis of a text. Here's a tip for you. Familiarize yourself with the textual conventions you're studying. In the case of Ransom, it is a novel, so things like narrative perspective, structure, language, symbols, imagery, and tone are things you should be looking out for. Whereas Invictus is a film, so you might be looking at things like camera angles, music, mise-en-scene, so how a shot is constructed, and even the setting. Ransom and Invictus may be different in medium, novel and film, yet both convey similar ideas on leadership through different literary techniques and textual conventions. Let's go through leadership first. Ransom has Priam and Achilles, who bear the burdens and obligations of their leadership position heavily, constantly battling their duty as a leader and their personal traumas. Hence, Malouf writes using third-person omniscient narration that allows his readers to delve into the minds of both Priam and Achilles and their inner conflict. For example, if Malouf had written in his novel in first person, we would only be privy to the thoughts and feelings of one of the characters in isolation. However, writing it in third person allows the narrative to dive into the thoughts of its characters. Malouf contextualizes the trials and tribulations of its leaders amongst their personal conflicts. Similarly, Invictus has Pina and Mandela who have put aside their past in order to lead their people to a brighter future. Eastwood's inclusion of flashbacks of Mandela's time in jail, like Ransom, provides viewers with an understanding of the individual struggles and expectations faced by leaders. Forgiveness. Both texts also convey the immense power of forgiveness. In this case, both Ransom and Invictus employ a variety of microcosms to depict this. A microcosm is a mini event or person within a text that encapsulate the larger ideas of a text in a more condensed version. For example, Ransom has Somax's story about beauty in which she murders his son, and yet Somax nonetheless hugs beauty out of grief. That is, Somax and beauty act as a microcosm for Malouf's larger message about the necessity of forgiveness. Similarly, Invictus uses the little boy Sypho as a recurring motif throughout the film that Eastwood returns to, initially resistant to the Springboks and the Africana who still represented the apartheid. Sypho is eventually captured embracing a white police officer at the conclusion of the film. Hence, Eastwood demonstrates the importance of forgiveness through the microcosm of the little boy Sypho. Change. Change is another theme touched upon both Ransom and Invictus. Whilst Ransom focuses on the universal importance of individual growth and change, Invictus demonstrates the impact of change on a societal scale, yet they both employ similar techniques in their depictions. 
Ransom is structured in five parts that delve into the personal journeys of the three protagonists in the novel as they change. Similarly, Invictus heavily contains use of parallel editing, which allows Eastwood to convey the impact of change on a variety of groups at the same time as the camera cuts between varying scenes across South Africa. Thus, each text has varying methods to highlight its message on change. It's important to view these texts as a construction and to acknowledge that they have arranged their respective texts in a certain way. If you're struggling to understand literary devices, Google some online and start asking yourself why questions about how the text is constructed. Why did Google write in third person as opposed to first person? Why did Eastwood choose this particular soundtrack? Why has Eastwood framed this particular shot in this way? Remember that it's not enough to simply label particular textual conventions or literary techniques. You need to be able to articulate why Maloof or Eastwood has used them. This is the underlying principle of the entire English course. Also note that Ransom and Invictus are different in both content and medium. So whilst they have many similarities, they are individual texts. So you can also explore how their different textual conventions alter or change what they're saying about a certain common theme. As shown in this video, the texts don't have to use the same literary devices to show an idea as well, like how change is shown through the five chapters in Ransom versus parallel editing in Invictus. Lastly, you don't just need to stick to literary devices. Make sure that you find a balance between your quotes and literary devices, and by doing so, you'll ensure that you offer a holistic and nuanced approach to both Ransom and Invictus. Now I've also got a few more resources that I think would be really helpful for you guys. On our Lisa Study Guides website, we have study guides on both Ransom and Invictus. Particularly for Invictus, we have a blog post that focuses on film techniques, which should help you quite a bit in terms of learning literary devices. I'll make sure I link all of those relevant resources for you in the description box below so that you can go and further your own studies in your own time. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you soon. Bye!